Okay, please be seated for our next contest. I would like to turn the lectern over to Tim Bolger for one moment for an announcement. As everybody knows, this contest is being taped. It will be made public after the conference. Copies will be made available to the contestants only if they contact me directly through timsvideo.com via private YouTube link. When you get that link, please do not share it with family and friends until after the conference is made public. I'm only doing this to help you for your self-evaluation purposes and to see how you speak. You remember, contact me directly through timsvideo.com and video will be made public after the conference. Thank you. Now we will conduct the humorous speech contest. If you used your cell phone during the break, please be sure to turn that off or onto Vibro or to some other non-embarrassing setting. Once the contest begins, the sergeant at arms will secure the doors. Members of the audience are asked to refrain from leaving or entering the room during the contest. After the contest, please do not leave the room until it is determined that all the ballots have been collected. Here is the speaking order for the humorous speech contest. Contestant number one, Joan Walton. Contestant number two, Linda Henningenberg. Contestant number three, Martina Matizen. And contestant number four, Seth Colley. We will now proceed with the humorous speech contest. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. After all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given the time they need to complete their ballots. We will now begin the humorous speech contest. Uh -huh. yeah. Contestant number one. Joan Walton, it's only a number, it's only a number, Joan Walton. A, I'm adorable, B, I'm so beautiful, C, I'm a cutie full of charm, Really? At your age? <laughs> sure. It's just a number. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. Age is only a number. And we all have one. Possibly some of you are not pleased with your number. <laughs> if you're five, you want to be six. If you're a teenager, Nothing good happens until you're 16. And if you're my age, inside you feel like you're still 30, but then you look in the mirror, yikes, it's my mother! <laughs> so now I'm going backwards. Age is a strange phenomenon. Jack Benny said that age is a question of mind over matter. If you don't mind, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sometimes a young person will look at me like I have some kind of a condition that they will never get. No, honey, we're all in this together. I'm just a little bit ahead of some of you. <laughs> it seems as you mature or grow older that celebrating your birthday should not be that big a deal. But did you ever try to go all day long without anyone knowing it's your birthday? It's not that easy to be cool about it. At work, you pop into the lounge expecting somebody to jump out and say, surprise! 
after work you go out with your friends for drinks and dinner, you know they planned something special just for you. Turns out, no one knew. I think that age is just a state of mind. I think, since I am women inheriting some really good genes for growing older, that I shouldn't be that concerned about it. Actually, I did inherit some good genes for growing older. I was the one that would, at the carnival, look for the guy that would give you a prize if he couldn't guess your age. And I was pretty good at summing him. Then one day something happened. I went to McDonald's, I ordered a cup of coffee, and was given a discount. <laughs> how, did he, how did he know? Today, I'm not afraid to say, senior discount, please. I figure if I look like my mom, I might as well get the advantages. There are some seniors, however, who do push that window just a little bit. Take Maxine, for instance. Maxine is everybody's grandma. She had that perfect cap of silver hair. It was not easy for Officer Dewright to stop her when she was going 55 in a 35 mile an hour zone. Do you know how fast you were going? Yes, Officer, I do. But if I don't hurry up and get where I'm going, I'll forget where it was I wanted to go in the first <laughs> I am a substitute teacher, and I know that if I'm going to hang out with elementary school children, I need to be prepared to hear it exactly as it is. One day I was teaching fourth graders PE, and one of my adoring students looked at the badge that I had borrowed from someone, and he said, was that you before you got to be old? <laughs> <laughs> I find that as I mature, it helps to have an attitude of gratefulness. For instance, I'm grateful for my health, for my family, and frankly, I'm grateful that wrinkles don't hurt. <laughs> Do you know why we lovely seniors look so good? It's because we are supporting a multi-billion dollar cosmetic industry. <laughs> if we collectively would ever just let ourselves go, the whole economy would go out. <laughs> There's not much chance of that happening. Because Maxine and the girls like to look good. Now we could get a little bit of assistance from the airline industry. Do you know how impossible it is for me to get all of my essential liquids and gels into this Ziploc container? I'd like to close with a story about two seniors who were very grateful to have each other, Mildred and Bert. Mildred and Bert were in their 90s, but they were doing pretty well. They were just becoming a little bit forgetful. One morning they discussed this issue, their forgetfulness, with their doctor. The doctor suggested that they should start to write things down that they wanted to remember. So that evening, Mildred and Bert were watching television. Bert decided to get something from the kitchen. Mildred, may I bring you something from the kitchen? Yes, Bert, I would love a bowl of ice cream. And maybe you should write that down. Mildred, I can remember a bowl of ice cream. Bert. I'd love to have some strawberries on my ice cream, and now I know you should write that down. Mildred, ice cream, strawberries, I got it. Oh, and Bert, well, we'd make it just perfect if you would put a little whipped cream on my strawberries. Now I know you should write that down. Mildred, please. So Bert went off to the kitchen. He came back about 15 minutes later with a plate of scrambled eggs and bacon. <laughs> Mildred looked at the plate, she looked at Bert, and she said, where's my toast? <laughs> A, I'm adorable, B, I'm so beautiful, C, 
see I'm a cutie full of charm. Just remember, at any age, it's just a number. This is Silence while the judges mark their ballots. <laughs> Contestant number two, Linda Hennigenberg, if only, if only, Linda Hennigenberg. When I was a little girl, I loved to play dress up. Well, I put on my oversized yellow sunglasses. And I would play movie star. <laughs> Fairly typical little girl existence. What if I had been raised in a completely different environment? What if I had been raised in a world full of Toastmasters? <laughs> Perhaps instead of playing movie star with my oversized sunglasses, I would have played world champion of public speaking. <laughs> with my undersized yellow band. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Contest Chair, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I started thinking about all the different events that occurred during my growing up years and how vastly different they would have been <laughs> if only I'd been raised in a world full of Toastmasters like you. For starters, my mother would have given well-crafted speeches instead of long-winded lectures. <laughs> if lecture were an Olympic sport, my mother would have been in the Gold Medal Hall of Fame right next to Michael Phelps. <laughs> she could go for hours, <laughs> days even, before taking a breath. <laughs> there was no looking around the room. There was no looking down at your hands. You had to look her square in the eye the entire time. That got pretty monotonous. So I devised a clever plan to alleviate the eyeball strain. Instead of focusing on her eyes, I would study different parts of her face. And I would think, why, Mother, you're looking radiant today. You must be using oil of Olay. <laughs> or, oh, Mom, the eyebrows are getting a little wild. It's time to bust out the tweezers. <laughs> if only I'd been raised in a world full of Toastmasters. At seven minutes, I could have thrown up the red card. <laughs> then 30 seconds away from freedom. Or she'd have been disqualified. Yeah. I didn't grow up in a Toastmasters world, and neither did my mother. Instead, when she finally said, young lady, what do you have to say for yourself? I told her she needed to tweeze her eyebrows. <laughs> I didn't remember much after that. My father mentioned something about scraping me off the floor with a stick and a spoon. <laughs> if only I'd been raised in a world full of Toastmasters, I could have answered any question with confidence and poise. When I was a junior in high school, Mrs. Slovic colored me after class and she said, Miss Keeper, is there a cohesive explanation as to why your homework was not completed last night? I could have answered her table topic style. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting you bring that up, Mrs. Slovic, because just last night I was pondering life and I was thinking about what's important. There's certain things that matter, certain things just don't count. 
buy the clothes on our backs, the money in our pockets, that car out in the driveway, even our homework. In the grand scheme of things, they just don't count. And what really counts is the people in our lives, those special people that leave an indelible footprint on our souls. People who are bathe us in wisdom, patience, and understanding. People like you. <laughs> and so last night, instead of doing my homework, I went out with my friends and I forged bonds. I nurtured relationships because in the grand scheme, that's what really counts. I didn't grow up at a Toastmasters role. And neither did Mrs. Slovak. <laughs> Instead, I gave her a lame excuse. She gave me detention. <laughs> if only I had been raised in the Toastmasters world, my father, instead of punishing me, would have evaluated my performance. <laughs> my first car was a 1971 VW Volkswagen Bug. had a big chrome bumper in the front that overhung the side of the car by about two inches. I was leaving to go to school one morning, and I was backing out of the garage ever so cautiously, and suddenly the right bumper caught the garage door track, ripped it out, and I enhanced the size of the garage <laughs> by about three feet. <clears throat> well, that night I had to go home and face the fire squad and tell my father what I'd done, and if he'd been a Toastmaster, he would have evaluated my performance. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Lindy, I have to admire the surgical precision with which you executed this maneuver. <laughs> because I noticed that not only did you manage to enhance the size of my garage considerably, I also noticed that you managed to leave not a single scratch on your car. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. I would have liked to have seen you miss the garage. Perhaps <laughs> closer attention to your mirrors, particularly on the right-hand side. That's something we can work on going forward with the overall surgically executed precision maneuver, and I look forward to never seeing it again. <laughs> I didn't grow up in a Toastmasters world, and neither did Dad. Instead, I asked for a second chance. He asked me for my car keys. <laughs> Two months. Well, a little epilogue of that story. A few months later, Dad did the exact same thing, only he really enhanced the garage. He didn't get grounded. But I would have sold my firstborn to evaluate his performance. <laughs> yes, friends, if only we had been raised in a Toastmasters world, how vastly different things could have been. Lives could have been forever altered. I'm living proof. That's right, you just witnessed me paint myself into a corner in grand fashion. <coughs> Because my son, unlike me, did come of age in a Toastmasters world. <laughs> and by giving this speech with him present, from this moment forward, I will never again be able to lecture him for longer than seven minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have one minute of silence while the judges complete their <coughs> Contestant number three, Martina Matizen. We're Sergeant Smiley's Raiders. <laughs> We're Sergeant Smiley's Raiders, Martina Matizen.
press. You'd love to do it. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and our guests this evening, I've got someone like that. Her name is Florence Gianola. She's the banker at my bank. I've known her for years, and she is always put together. She's stylish, she's smart, and she's filled with wisdom. And she'll give me little pieces of those wisdom. She'll say things like, Martina, dear, remember that your children are always watching you lead by good example. See what I mean? Good advice. How can you deny that? Absolutely. She'd give me little pieces, too. She might say, remember, dear, when someone gives you a compliment, don't make excuses. Don't dispute it. Simply say thank you. Another piece of good advice. You can see why I wanted to impress her. I had an appointment with her at the bank, and I was very anxious to show up on time and put together myself. And it wasn't that long ago that I thought the secret to being on time was superior Russian skills. Matter of fact, I was very hungry one time that I threw my toothbrush in the sink, spit in the drawer. <laughs> I learned that that's not the secret to being in time. The secret is to plan ahead, as Florence taught me to do. Now, it wasn't that long ago. Anytime I left the house, I would start. I had three little kids. They were one, two, three, all two years old, behind the safety gate at the top of the stairs. I put one on the hip, and I'd go down the stairs, into the garage, into the family van, put him in his car seat. But when I did that, those two were crying. They thought I left. So I'd go and help them, and then he would cry, and then she would cry, and then they would all cry. It was a crying convention. So I realized, okay, what would Florence do? She would come up with the solution. I will sing, and then we'll know that they weren't abandoned, that I didn't leave them. The problem was, I can't sing. I mean, I really can't sing. Uh, children didn't know. They stopped crying, but my neighbors started. <laughs> there was more than one time I brought tears to my husband's eyes, but it was working. So Tom comes time to meet Florence at the bank, and then they're clean, polished, and ready at the top of the stairs. I'm packed with a diaper bag, prepared for every eventuality. And I pick up my boy, put him on my hip. You know the drill. We're Sergeant Smiley's Raiders. We're Raiders of the night downstairs in the garage. We're happy little children. We'd rather play than fight. And I put him in the car seat and I lock him up. I just saw something in the back seat of my car. It moved. It's furry. It's got a ringed tail. Oh my gosh. Oh. I locked a raccoon in the car overnight. Oh. My boy. I, go, I want to get him, but I'm stopped by the car seat. And the force that I'm using to get him is knocking me backwards. I fall out, oh, out of the van. In a box, a stiff cardboard box, <laughs> filled with bottles of waste oil. And one bottom down, feet up in a box. My boy is tied into his car seat securely in, in the van with a trapped wild raccoon. Oh. Now, what if he starts crying? I gotta sing. I gotta, I gotta sing and use a calm voice. We're Sergeant Smiley's Raiders. <laughs> okay, stop right there. Everyone knows that when a mother is separated from her child and perceiving danger, she possesses superhuman strength. I can see myself karate chopping my way out of the box, leaping in a single bound into the van, rescue my son, <laughs> but I can't sing and I got no superhuman powers. <laughs> I'm stuck in the box and I can't get out. I gotta, I gotta launch myself. So I start rocking in the box and boom, <laughs> fall on the floor and crawl out and I am, oh, I'm, blech. I am just filthy, dirty, but I'm free. So I can go get my son. I put my hand on the outside of the van and on the seat. And I'm, did I see his face? Did he have foam hanging from his mouth? I'm not sure, but I gotta go in. So I go in and I get my boy out and I hold him to me and I lock eyes with the beast. <laughs> it was the fattest, happiest, most lethargic raccoon you have ever seen. He could not waddle any faster than he could roll. He was sitting in the snack bag, and, oh, those groceries I forgot from yesterday too. Eating them all, all night long. If this wasn't real, he would have been on his cell phone calling his friends. Hey, coffee! Come on now first! Scored in the garage. No threats. But look at those car seats. They're clean. I can make my appointment. I can now use my superior rushing skills. And I know what to do. Get the boy upstairs. We're starting to smile. Raiders and Raiders of the night. Put it down with the others. Go into the kitchen. 
get up spaghetti potlets. We're happy little children. We'd rather play and fight. Get into the garage. Bing, bing, bing. Get out. I have an appointment. He doesn't. He just waddles out, looks over his shoulder, as if to say, what's with the noise? And you had nothing to drink in there. Off he goes. Out. He's gone. Got to get the kids in. Now, I'm still kind of dirty and sticky, and I can't hold them close. But I get boy number one in, and he's locked in his car seat. And then I've got to get number two and get him locked in his car seat. I'm really starting to get hot, you know? And he's all set to go, and I'm singing the fourth chorus of that song. And I'm going to cry from that song pretty soon. Get the next one all ready to go. They're in, but look at me. Oof, I'm a mess. I can't go like this. Now, see Mrs. Florence Gianola. Ah, laundry room. That's what I'll do. Go in the laundry room, take off the old pants, put on fresh ones, take off the top. Mm, there's no tops. That's okay. No one will know. Put the jacket on, zip up. <laughs> I've got a winter coat on. Get in my side of the van and drive to the bank. Obeying all the laws of physics and most of the traffic laws. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you now, did I get to the bank on time? Yes. <laughs> I did, but... I'm not in. You can't leave your kids in the car. You have to get a stroller out. It's illegal and unsafe. So I get number one and number two and number three, which I think I got him in upside down. But he'll wiggle around get into the bank. And then pull, zip, check the zipper, walk in. Who greets me? Florence Gianola. Oh, Mrs. Gianola, how nice to see you. And she says, Martina, dear. All put together, I can't help but notice on time how lovely to see you. You look wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> we have one minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots. Contestant number four, Seth Colley, Confessions of a Serial Dater. <laughs> Confessions of a Serial Dater, Seth Colley. <laughs> Friends, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, and anybody else I've forgotten. My name is Seth, and I'm here to warn you. Yes, you heard me right. Warn you about the perils of serial dating. You might not think you need to be warned, but I'm here to tell you, you do need to be warned, and I'm the guy to do it. If somebody else had told me this a few years ago, I would have said, no way. It would have saved me a lot of headaches and hassles. Because I thought I was done with dating in my life. But then, the evil specter a victim of divorce crept up, and 22 years being date-free was all thrown aside. I was presented with this great big supermarket of dating, and I didn't know what to do. So I thought to myself, well, when you were younger, you knew what to do, so I'll fall back on that. So you know what? I said, all right, let's go to some parties. You know, I'm a college guy, fraternity boy, yeah. Well, the thing is that I didn't realize that the kegger in college doesn't equate to the four-year-old Chuck E. Cheese party. Yeah. <laughs> and so that I had to throw away. I said, well, you know, I used to meet women in the supermarket. 
So I'll try that. I'll go to the supermarket. Well, again, I'm thinking of my college self. Meeting women in the beer aisle doesn't really equate to meeting women in the antacid aisle. <laughs> so I said, all right, can't do that. What about at work? Yes, I used to meet women at work. Well, I now work with all dudes. Well, that's not quite my style. So I said, I gotta do something else. Friends, I'll go see my friends. I didn't realize this. For some reason, married women don't want their husbands knowing available single women. Well, that wasn't an option. But I heard about this thing in the 22 years since I had last dated called the internet. And with the click of the mouse, I was off and I became an internet dater. And that's where I really became a serial dater. Because as I started to go on dates, I realized that when my friends and family would ask me, how did the date go? I had to think and say, well, not so, eh, whatever. And that really wasn't a good answer, especially with your guy friends, if you don't know about that. So I started to realize that the women started to have characteristics as I was meeting them of well-known breakfast cereals. And that's where I think I can save all of you the trouble and hassle and get you out of the peril of having to worry about dating if you remember a few simple cereals. And if you encounter them, they may not be right for you because they definitely weren't right for me. Now, the first cereal I'd like to introduce you to is Kashi. That's the granola. We've all probably experienced this person at some point in their lives. When I was younger, I wasn't really into the granola type. But I thought, hey, I'm older now. Maybe my taste buds have matured. Let's give it a try. Well, what I found out is, well, the, the Kashi girl is still sprouts and tofu. And I'm burgers and fries. So the Kashi really wasn't right for me, so I put her back on the shelf at the grocery store and moved on. The next girl I encountered was Captain Crunch. Yes, Captain Crunch. Now, the Captain Crunch girl, she's mad at the world. Some guy has just ruined her life. And she wanted me to sit down and commiserate with her and deal with it. And I kid you not, at our date, she pulls out a photo album, and we spent the next hour at Applebee's going through her entire life with her soulmate, who just broke her heart. At the end of the day, she closed the photo album, smiled, and said, I've had a wonderful time. Would you like to have a second date? And I just looked at her and said, I'm sorry, I can't end up in a photo album at Applebee's. So I put Captain Crunch back on the shelf. Now, those two are pretty safe, and the next girl I'd like to introduce you to, you do have to worry a little bit about, because she has the fine packaging, she has the sugary sweetness, and there is the promise of perhaps a prize hidden somewhere deep within. <laughs> but there's a reason why this girl is available and out there to date. She's Fruit Loops! <laughs> yes! The name says it all, ladies and gentlemen. And if you encounter Fruit Loops, please run, don't walk to your nearest exit. The only story I can share with you, well, the only story I can share in a public forum legally, is with three catchphrase words. And pay attention because it could happen to you. Because remember, the first word I'd like to share with you, background check. <laughs> the second word, stalker. And the third word, restraining order. <laughs> yes, I wish I was making this story up. And that was all before date number two, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so you can see why I stepped away from Fruit Loops and definitely left that on my grocery shelf. Now the next cereal is really, by chance, the most dangerous. And that cereal is because all the questions you've been asked in dating world, if you haven't dated in a while, you'll be asked these questions like, how long were you married? How long have you been divorced? Do you have any children? What do you do for a living? And those questions are simple and normally very innocuous. But this next cereal, this next girl I want to introduce you to, is doing that so she can form a financial portfolio on you because she is trying to find out what you have and what she can get. Because she supplements her income by being a professional dater, and that's the cookie crook, the cookie crisp girl. She will sit there and try to get free dates, free food, free anything she can out of you. 
my experience with Cookie Crook, we went to dinner at an Italian restaurant. I got there five minutes early. She was there already with a glass of wine in the bar. We transferred to the table when we came. We had a nice meal. She ordered a glass of wine, because remember, we're at an Italian restaurant. The bill came. I looked at it and had to flag the waiter over and say, excuse me, this can't be right. There's three additional glasses of wine here. And she only had one. And the waiter looked at me and smiled and said, your friend transferred her bar tab to your table. Now, if you haven't had wine in a restaurant, ladies and gentlemen, she had a bottle of four glasses at restaurant prices. So I had to step away from this one. Now, before you think it's all for naught, there is a cereal that is healthy, and it's the right one for me, and that's Cheerios. Because it's wholesome, it's good for you, and in my case, it's heart healthy. And this is the one I have on my breakfast table, and I've been waking up to for two years now. <laughs> One minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Actually, we're just waiting uh, until the ballots are collected at this point in the contest. We have collected all of the ballots. Thank you so much. We're going to uh, interview the humorous speech contestants, but before we do that, I'd like to just step backwards a moment, uh, similar to when we would run the 16 millimeter projector backwards at school. Uh, it, yep, much of it, but uh, we have quite a bit of fun with that. Some of you have also had that. I, 
was remiss in uh, giving some certificates of participation to some of our earlier uh, contestants, and I wanted to do that. First of all, uh, Amy Acha, I'd like to call you back up. Uh, to yeah. being a teacher, a retired teacher, but also a substitute teacher uh, in uh, Huntley and Algonquin, this says. And uh, you, so you said elementary uh, students primarily? I do. I substitute through eighth grade, through middle school. Okay, great. But maybe at, not after last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> when I taught, tried to teach eighth graders art. So, anyway. Ah, so <laughs> understand. And that was a challenge. A little bit of a challenge. Understand. Well, great. Thanks. Not because of the art, you, because of something else. But. I, that's another, sounds like a story for another speech. It does. Okay, good. I gather a lot of good material. Well, great. Well, thanks so much. Uh, we want to thank you for participating, and I have this uh, certificate of participation for you. Joan, thanks so much, and uh, thanks again for being a participant. Uh, again, we were about to interview you, and then, uh, understandably, we, since you're in both contests, we held that off until this humorous speech contest. Uh, give us your club. Club name? Well, Anybody here? Oh, we'll start out with Fox Valley 6840. Okay. Yeah. 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 Two clubs. Hewitt. Three clubs. Top. That's it. <laughs> and technically still carry club. Okay, four gloves. Five, all right, good enough. <laughs> One I'm of representing your, Fox Valley. Understand. <laughs> One of uh, your interests, it says, is your son, and I'm thrilled to see Stand your son up. here. <laughs> we've, uh, we've met on Facebook. Throw him under the bus. Well, I've, I've seen him many times on Facebook, and it's wonderful. Too. No, you wanted to sell me, though. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And he is a Toastmaster, by the way. He has joined Toastmasters working on his fourth speech. Now, it says that you, this is uh, interesting, I never knew this, that you were a former Illinois State roller skating champion. Well, I love roller skating. It seems like the rinks are fewer and far between and harder to find, but tell us a little bit about that. Well, first of all, it is not roller derby. Understand. That's usually the first Understand reaction I get is, you mean what, roller derby? No, it's artistic roller skating, just like artistic ice skating. But where I saw this point. 
<coughs> do you still? It's boring. No. Not at all. Okay. It's boring, but people don't know it exists. That exist. Great. Well, I have a uh, two certificates of participation. Thank you for participating in both of our speech uh, contests here. Let me find the other one and. Um, do I have two? Here, there it is. There we go. Thank Perfect. You. Thanks so much. See you again. Uh, let's see here. Now, one of the first notable accomplishment I noticed, because it, it is something that I enjoy doing as well, it was that you can use a chainsaw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How did that come about? We needed firewood. <laughs> okay. so, so you, like me, are more just, you know, you're a cutter, um, not out carving any <laughs> raccoons in, uh, in trunks of trees or anything. Oh, no, we just, okay. we just having fun with the bio. And well, that, that is, that's enough. a good one. Use so look what I did last week. Uh, <laughs> not with the chainsaw, I'm was afraid it? so. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> uh, when I was in the Boy Scouts, we had to earn something called totem chip, right. which... They wouldn't allow us to handle a knife or an axe or anything else until we had uh, earned that. So I might have to come over and uh, give you a, uh, I need, I need a primer to on, uh, on uh, chainsawing, <laughs> uh, which can be quite dangerous. Um, and, and you talked about your fear of singing in public. Uh, and you, you do say it's awful. Now, my daughter says she never uh, will sing, and I always tell her she has a great voice. So it's not that you, you well, actually. I, I, well, I can't sing. I don't sing. I enjoy it. But the, you got to step out of your comfort zone and do something you're uncomfortable with. Someone told me. Well, that's great. And so that's why I did that. And you are now uh, a member of the Toast of Algonquin Club. I am. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, when do they meet? They meet on Tuesdays and sometimes Wednesdays. You've got to know what's going on and watch the website. All right. Tuesdays and Wednesdays at the Algonquin Branch Library. Great. Well, thanks so much for participating again in both contests. We have two certificates of participation uh, for you, Martina, and we appreciate Thank you. you. Set. And again, what club are you with? Post cereal. No, it's <laughs> Crystal Clear Toastmasters, your home club, Jimmy. My home club, Crystal Clear Toastmasters, and Yay. Seth is our president. Yeah. Uh, similar to John, who had mayhem as one of his interests. Um, you, uh, you, let's see, where did I see that? It was, uh, ah, competitive procrastination. <laughs> Want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's award-winning procrastination. Okay. And I actually won a couple of trophies, but I just haven't seen the go pick them up just yet. I got you. <laughs> and I know you're a big ice hockey fan. And the other thing on Facebook I've seen uh, Seth doing, and I have to thank anybody who's been my friend on Facebook for more than a week for maintaining that relationship, uh, was that uh, shots of him with various baseball mascots uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that tour that you took this summer? Yeah, I have this purchase for going to baseball games. And for some reason, except for the White Sox Southpaw, so if anybody knows him, I need to add him to my collection, is that I run into these mascots. And so as the little kids are going, hey, 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 I'm like, hey, dude, you want to take a picture? And they're always like, sure. So what Jim's talking about is I went on a span that the girl I alluded to, who is my Cheerios, she went to Europe. I went to seven little towns here in the Midwest. So for the time the two weeks she's in Europe, I'm at minor league baseball parks and posing with mascots. <laughs> There's some great shots of these, uh, these mascots from all over the, uh, the minor leagues. So it was quite fun. Uh, and how long have you been in Toastmasters? I am a charter member of Crystal Clear. So I've been in Toastmasters going on seven years now. Great. Well, we thank you for participating in this uh, speech contest. Here's a certificate of participation. Thanks so much, Seth. Okay, perfect timing. 
At this time, uh, this is what everybody has been waiting for. So, at this time, I would like to call our area governor, Mr. Dean Glosson, to the lectern. Our Dean. And he is here to recognize the members who participated today and to present the award. serve as our Toastmaster for our Area 1 contact. We need to give each other, all of us, a round of applause to each other. For us. All the functionaries, everyone who did anything to make this contest possible. It takes a team. It takes a real team to do it. And, and uh, Area 1 knows how to do it very well. So we, I would like to ask, our division governor, John Labity, please join me at the lecture, if you would, please. This way, I get to actually touch the hardware. Just basically, quickly, I just want to, I, I need to make sure that uh, we, I need some help to clean this place up before we, we get out of here. Anybody who, can, who is willing to, to stick around for a little while, just, just, I know Toastmasters is self-cleaning, so it really goes without saying. So. Pictures. Pictures. Pictures afterwards. Pictures afterwards, yes, please, please. Contestants, make sure that we stick around and take pictures afterwards. And also a, a plug for the Area 1, or not the Area 1, but the, uh, the district conference, as I would like to buy, not me personally, but District 30 would like to buy everyone breakfast at the Achievers Breakfast. And as the Achievers Breakfast chairperson, I'm challenging all my fellow Area 1 members to, to participate in that breakfast by turning in your education award before October 20th. If you can possibly do that, I'd love to see my fellow Area 1 Toastmasters at, at the Achievers Breakfast. So having plugged that and uh, plugged for the cleanup, I'm going to ask uh, John Labby to give me the second place trophy for the evaluation contest. This one right here. Second place trophy. Second place for the, please help me welcome to the lectern, Martina Matheson. Contest going to the division contest. Please help me welcome Linda Ennigenberg. And finally, for the humorous speech contest, Area One, please help me welcome to the lectern the second place is Seth Colley. And the winner of the humorous speech contest for Area 1, please help me welcome to the lectern, Martina Mizzica. Contest adjourned. <laughs>